Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to explain how we can use a scanner to accept some user input. The scanner class is found in the Java utility package of your library, and we need to import that before we can use the scanner. So outside of the class, at the top of our program, this is what we're going to type. Import java.util and the name of the class we would like to import, which is scanner. Then a semicolon. Now we can use the scanner class to create a scanner object. So we're going to be performing a little bit of object-oriented programming. We'll be covering object-oriented programming in a later part of the series, so don't worry. So repeat after me. Scanner, then we need a name for the scanner. Let's call it scanner, all lowercase, equals new scanner. Then a set of parentheses and a semicolon. Within the parentheses, we're going to type system.in. And there we go, we have our scanner. So we can use the scanner to accept some user input. So let's let the user know that we would like them to type in something, maybe a name. Let's create a prompt that will ask somebody for their name. So within a print line statement, we'll type, what is your name? And next what we'll do is take our user input and assign it to a variable, perhaps a string variable called name. String name equals, and now we're going to use our scanner. So we type in the name of the scanner, dot, and to enter a line of text, we're going to use a certain method of the scanner. It is the next line method. And when we type in user input, we type it into the console window here at the bottom. So let's do something with this name. Maybe display this within a message. System that out print line. Hello plus whatever your name is. So let's compile and run this. What is your name? Now our program is currently paused until we type in some user input and then press the enter key. When you press enter, that's how you submit some user input into the console window. So I'm going to click within my console window and type in something. I'm going to type in bro and to submit some user input, you press the enter key and it states hello plus my name, which is what I entered, bro. Now there's different types of input that we can accept. This time, let's accept only an integer number. Perhaps we can ask somebody for their age. So let's write a prompt for that. System that out print line. How old are you? And this time we will declare an integer variable, maybe called age. Int age equals scanner dot next. And we are looking for int. So we can only accept a whole integer. You are plus age plus years old. Okay, let's try this again. What is your name, bro? How old are you? Let's just say that I'm 18. Hit enter. Hello, bro. You are 18 years old. So what happens if we do not enter in a number? So let's try and break this. What is your name, bro? How old are you? We're not going to enter a number this time. Let's type in the word pizza and see what happens. Well, we encountered an exception. We encountered an input mismatch exception because when our scanner is looking for an integer, we typed in a string. So we need to make sure that the input type, the data type matches. In a future lesson, we'll be covering exception handling where we can prevent this very thing from happening. But for now, since we're beginners, we'll just have to be sure to type in the correct data type of the input that our program is looking for. Now, there's one more thing that I want to show you guys. This is a common problem if you use next line after next int or anything else that's not next line. So let's ask somebody for their favorite food this time. So let's add that at the end. System that out on print line. What is your favorite food? Then we'll create a string variable called food. String food equals scanner dot next line. And we will display this. System that out on print line. You like plus food. All right. So here are the questions. What is your name? Bro, how old are you? 18. Now pay attention to this when I press enter.
When we reached the question on what is your favorite food, well, our program skipped our user input and continued on with the rest of the code. So it states, hello, bro, you are 18 years old, but we were not able to input anything for our favorite food. Here's the reason why. Here's what's going on. Let's pretend that this box is a representation of our scanner, and we're going to use the next line method of our scanner to read a line of text. So we type in our name and then press the enter key to submit. So this backslash n is an escape sequence for a new line. The next line method will read an entire line of text and stop when it reaches a new line character. So after we call the next line method, our scanner is going to be empty. However, if we were to call a different method that doesn't read a new line character such as next int, so we type in our input such as the number 18 and then press the enter key, that will add a new line character. So our next int method is only going to read this numeric portion of our scanner, and then when we submit it, well, this new line character is still going to be within our scanner. And if we were to use our scanner again and call a different method like next line, well, our next line method thinks that we're at the end because there's this new line character within our scanner. So we would need some way to clear out that new line. One easy fix for this is that after you call the next int method, what we could do is call the next line method to clear our scanner. So I'm just going to copy this portion and paste it. We're not really going to do anything with that new line character. This will just clear the scanner for us. So now we should be able to answer all three questions. So type in your name. What is your name? It is bro. How old are you? Let's say I'm 18. What is your favorite food? And you can see that it paused this time, unlike the first time. And my favorite food is pizza. Press enter. Hello bro, you are 18 years old. You like pizza. Well then, that is one way in which you can use a scanner to accept some user input. Scanners are capable of much more. You can also use them to read the contents of a file and a few other things, but we'll learn about those in future videos. And if you need to use a scanner, be sure to include this import at the top import java.util.scanner because the scanner class is found within the utility package and then you'll need to create a scanner object just by following these steps scanner you can call it scanner equals new scanner well guys and gals that is how scanners work in java now an expression is a combination of operands and operators an operand is the values variables numbers or different quantities that you might see in a program and operators, they are those arithmetic symbols that you might see, such as the plus sign for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then modulus. So let's go over a few examples, just so that we know how they work. Let's say I have an integer variable called friends, and I will set this equal to maybe 10. So we can change the value of the friends variable by using an arithmetic expression. So let's say that we make a new friend. So we're going to add one to my variable of friends. To increment my variable friends, I can just use the plus operator and then add a new operand to my variable friends. So if I would like to assign a new value to my friends variable, I'm going to type in the name of my variable equals friends plus one because we made a new friend. And then I will print the value of friends. So our friends variable now contains 11. So we could also subtract, take a wild guess as to what's gonna happen. We just lost a friend. Let's multiply. Uh, let's multiply our friends by two. And now we have 20 friends. And let's divide. We're going to divide our friends into two. And we have five friends. Now the modulus gives you the remainder of division. So we have 10 friends. What if we had modulus three? Well, that does not divide evenly. So we're going to have a remainder of one friend. It's kind of like in group projects where everybody has to get into a group of three and there's always somebody that's left over. Think of it that way. Although if our group of friends was divided into groups of two, there would be no remainder because 10 divided by two equals five evenly and there is no remainder. So that's all what the modulus is. It gives you the remainder of any division that occurs. Now there is a shorthand to increment a variable by one. So normally the long way of writing this out would be type in the name of the variable equals because we're going to reassign a value friends plus one, right? Well, there's a shorthand way of incrementing this and that is to use the increment operator, which is just plus plus. 
and then a semicolon. So this will add one to a value. And now we have 11 friends. If you want to decrement, that would be minus minus. And now we have nine friends. Hold up, wait a minute. Before you go, I gotta discuss integer division because I forgot to talk about it. So if we divide a number by an integer, if there is normally a remainder, well, our program is going to truncate the remainder. Here's an example. Let's say we have 10 friends and we're going to divide our friends by three. So we're dividing by a whole integer. So our result should be 3.33 repeating, right? Wrong, it's three. That's because with integer division, we truncate any decimal portion because we cannot store it. One easy fix for that is we can cast our result as a double value or a float as well. To cast a value as a different data type, to the left hand side of our expression, we're going to list the new data type that we would like to convert this value to. So we would like to convert our integer as a double value because we would like to retain that decimal portion of our result. However, our data type friends is an integer so it cannot store a double data type. So we should probably convert this to a double so that we can store this value. And now this program will successfully store this decimal portion of our expression. Well, that's really all you need to know to get started with expressions. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like it, then press the like button. Share it with your friends or anyone who wants to make his career in Java. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comment section is all yours. This is the fourth part of this series. For more parts from this series, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.